Well, you and I sat down in November and started talking about this. Can you believe the world we're living in? No, and who could, well, of course, nobody could have imagined it in November. Yeah. It seems so amazing when you and I, when I, you know, I came in to see you and said, I'm, I'm going to run for re-election. I may cough a lot. <coughs> I have my mask. This is allergy time for me. A lot of pollen today. And sitting out here, <laughs> I'll, my, I'll get itchy. But uh, at any rate, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? But you know, people have said, well, has it really changed since, you know, you first thought about it? Have the issues changed? Have... Well, yes and no. Because the truth of the matter is, the things that are important, that are really important to the city, sound fiscal management, mm -hmm. that's still there. It's just a little more intense. It's a little more challenging. But I am so excited today because we have gotten the news just in the last couple of days, excuse me, I'm gonna cough again, <coughs> that all of the rated, the bond rating agencies, Fitch, Moody's, S&P, have affirmed Al Strong AA plus bond rating. Now that's huge. Yeah. In these times, understanding these circumstances, they have still said, that we have very strong financial management, fiscal constraint, and we have the ability to manage in these difficult times. That says worlds about Fredericksburg. It tells we've always been a well-managed city and we have a superb staff now. We really do, our managers, our budget managers. But as you well know, we work the heck out of that budget. You attend all our meetings. Yeah. The council and the mayor are very involved. Boy, and these are such tough times. Nobody knows how long they're going to last, but to get that news, I think would, as you go forward, has to give you and should give, give the city a lot of confidence. It should. It should give the city voters a lot of confidence in their city staff and their city leadership. Um, one of the things, one of the, the reason this is being done, I should explain it, is that we're refinancing the bonds, the actually the courthouse bonds. And we're going to front load that money instead of, you know how when you do a refi, you, you, you uh, reduce your, your annual payment. Well, instead of reducing an annual payment, we're gonna front load it, which will give us over a million dollars to help, help us uh, uh, approach the 2021 budget and the immediate effects that the reduced income is gonna have on that budget. So that's, that's why we're doing this, but we're just thrilled that the bond agencies affirm that we are still very strong um, financially. Well, and it, and it also shows that, that when you and others, when, when you talk about Fredericksburg being a well-run city and, and, and the, the competent staff you have, they're not just words. Someone from the outside has looked at it and said, you are. That's right, that's right. It's been confirmed. If you read those reports, and they're, they're rather interesting reading because they summarize the city and all of that. It, 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 it's a really glowing. I mean, I've read ratings reports before and they don't always say such nice things about the community and they don't have to grow that way too either. So, but they pointed to fiscal constraint and proactive management and sound fiscal policies. So I, I feel good about that. And that's the challenge that, that we've got to face. You know, we are heavily dependent on consumption taxes, which in good times is wonderful. Yeah. It keeps our real estate tax low. It really works. But in bad times, then we got to, and then we've got to, you know, make up for it in, um, in, in, in looking hard at expenses. I'm really pleased also, um, Ted, as you know, we'll be meeting with the school board tomorrow night our annual joint meeting to yeah. talk about budgets. And they are working so well with the city. Uh, we have wonderful leadership in the schools right now. Um, and we are really pleased to know that they are, are going to have some monies and some resources, particularly from the CARE Act, that will help to offset the constraints that the city may have going forward with the school's budget. But we're working that out. 
And boy, Mary, I would I would think that that having the good relationship like that in this, you, you don't want to have to try to develop a good relationship in these times, as you go into these times now with a good relationship with the two of you. That oh, yeah. is going to really help. It's essential. It's absolutely essential. And I will say that Dr. Catlett and Mr. Baruti speak regularly and have been very close. But we have worked closely with the school board now for about. I guess it was September of maybe 2018 that we established a working group for two members of the school board and two members of the council and appropriate staff. And we really didn't have a set agenda except to communicate with each other on a regular basis hmm. so that we could do some healthy long range as well as short range planning. You know, our budgets are only going to be around. But we knew we were going to have capacity needs, and the first thing we did was to ask the school board to uh, do a school capacity plan. Boy, and that's all that is ongoing with a, a task force now, and 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 um, of, that includes citizens as well as school board members and counselors. And as you look at growth in the schools, that 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 will that will pay dividends to have gotten out in front on that issue. Well. We hope to. We feel we 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 weren't we a little we're paying a little bit of catch up because we do have some overcrowded uh, elementary schools and we know it and we know we've got to deal with it. As I, when we talk about the, the the situation we're in, I think I'll always remember the Friday before it all began. Early that morning, you sent me an email and said, "Can we meet sometime today to talk about this?" and you were the first, the, the, the city was the, the, the first one to sort of step out and, and, and you were to step out to me to say, hey, let's talk about some things that are, that, that are coming up. And uh, it certainly turned out to be much bigger than we even thought then, but there, there was some foresight of what was coming. Yes, there was. The city was the first to take action in the state, really, to attempt to um, prevent the spread of the virus. Um, and I'm proud of that. And we, everybody's looking forward to the governor's speech this afternoon to see exactly how we're going to move forward now, opening things up. But we have been, I think the community's been wonderful to listen to us and do what we've asked. And if we continue to wear that mask, which I do when I'm walking around town, but if we continue to wear that mask and continue to, to pay attention, I think we can gradually open up in a safe manner. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that we've not really had an outbreak yeah. in the city. If we can keep it dispersed, but I'm, I'm anxious as everybody is. I mean, we, we, I'm, I'm debating. My dentist called. I oh. haven't returned the call. Yeah. I think I'm going to put the appointment off. Yeah. <laughs> dentist, eye appointments, those kind of things. Yeah. So, on a few of the issues, what made you decide to run for re-election? Well, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm really passionate about is, is that this council, we, we have a vision. It's called uh, Fredericksburg 2036. It has all these different descriptions under the arts, under public works, under schools, of what we really want to accomplish by the year 2036. And under that vision, we have identified 34 priorities. And there are staff, the staff took those priorities and they, they have a three year chart of action, absolute plan of action under, with specific actions under those priorities. And they report to us every three months. Every three months, we get a detailed report and see where we stand and what's happening. This is a working vision like I've never seen anywhere. And when I describe it to people, they're very impressed. I mean, people who are on corporate boards mm -hmm. and other governing governments. But I'm I'm passionate about that. I want to I want to work with our city to to see these these things happen. And I'm just um, I enjoy the work. I feel like it's been good. I got a lot of encouragement from people to please run again. And I thought, well, I can. <laughs> I feel good. Things well, are going well. 
And when Why you not? when you talk about that plan, you, a lot of times we throw those numbers out of you know in in, in the future. All of a sudden, boom, twenty thirty six doesn't seem that far away. No, and it's not when you start capital yeah. start doing six year capital improvement plans and you start putting numbers like sixty five million and thirty four million. <laughs> yeah, and, but but it's 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 we we really have tried very hard to. Um, to have a vision and to keep it before us. And I think that's that's important for your leadership to to do. It, it really is. I walked around the, the the baseball stadium the other day and boy, isn't that gonna be- Isn't that fun. Exciting. Oh, that is so much fun. You look at that stadium and you think this isn't a high A stadium. This is like a triple A stadium. And, and I think when Fredericksburg sees it, they're gonna be so pleased. Yes. I know they are. And we're going to have so much fun there. There's so many yeah. things we're going to be able to do there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to Bev Cameron and give our former city manager, Beverly Cameron, um, his, his credit because he saw that not as we want a baseball team, but we want a multi-purpose stadium that the community can use. He saw that. That was the way he saw it all along. And he... He stuck to it, and um, and he was right. Something that we didn't have to finance, but most importantly, what a what a fun thing to be celebrating. It is. It must have been fun for you. Oh gosh, yes. Were well, you? I'll tell you what made it fun was we had such super partners. Yeah. In the ownership of the team, the Silver family. I mean, they are incredible to work with, and. When you've got a partner like that, that comes into town and embraces the town and immediately recognizes the strengths of the town and fell in love with us, it, well, at any rate, it's, 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 it's a marriage made in heaven and meant to be, I'm absolutely convinced. That the, the virtual opening day for, for you and, and, and Councilman Kelly had, had to be fun to get oh, to run was. out onto the field like it that. It was, it was. It, you know, I'm looking forward to sneak in without my hard hat and find my seat. Yeah. I haven't been up there now because I've hardly been out. I've been to one store. Only one time have I been to a store and I wore my gloves and my mask and everything. Um, my friend Trav has been doing the grocery shopping and I'm, I've essentially seen him. My son and granddaughter came by one day and stayed outside and talked to me. I was inside and they were outside. So there's been very little interaction I immediately self-quarantined myself yeah. because I knew it was essential to do so well I mean, just, I, mean just, I have no health conditions or anything but it just seemed like the wise yeah. thing to do and, and the campaign I'm sure has been tough you're a people person and oh, like to, really to knock hard. on doors and to talk it's to people really hard I really miss not talking to people I really do we got one no we got three meet and greets in where I got to visit with small groups of people and yeah. that was it. But I like knocking on doors. And of course, I, some some others who shall be nameless really thrive on yeah. it. <laughs> but I I look forward to it. You know, every campaign, I would, I would spend two to three hours every weekday and five or six hours every weekend day just hitting every registered voter. And I would, I would really enjoy talking to people. And they seem to enjoy, you know, and 99% of them would be appreciative. And they might have something they think we ought to do or not do, but 99% of them would say, thank you for doing this, and we appreciate living in Fredericksburg. Well, as tough as things are, and, and you know, you've seen, and your, your family's been here for, for years and years, as tough as this is, Fredericksburg's a tough place, and it'll come through this. It will, it absolutely will. We have the resources. We were in a very strong financial position before this happened and I think we will. We, we don't know how long it will take to work through it and it was really, really hard to furlough people and to cut salaries. Well, I... Because I'm telling you, Every one of those 40 people are vitally important to our organization. We don't have any dead wood in Fredericksburg staff. Yes. We really don't. And that was what was so killing. Um, 
and to ask our hardworking staff who now, because we furloughed people, are doing their job and part of somebody else's, to ask them to take a cut in salary is so hard. There, I hope we can restore that soon. There are, there are certain memories and moments that I'll remember, and, and, and one of them was when, when you did the, the video for the, the, the daily report that the city does, and that was tough when I you had, had a hard to, time getting through that. Yeah, I really did. And um, well, it's it's just you never want to have to do that. Now you, you hope it, everything bounced back. Yeah. Nobody knows, but you hope. Well, that will certainly be our goal. We 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 um, we're still working on approaching the shortfall we're going to see in the fourth quarter of of this year's budget. Yeah. Um, we will not pass the 2021 budget now until the last meeting in June will be the second vote on that. So we don't know fully what the 2021 budget will look like at this time. But um, obviously taking care of our staff is gonna be a very high priority for the council and, and for our managers when we approach that budget. Well, Mayor, I'll give you the give you the last word, and you can speak and and talk to to Fredericksburg residents of why they should vote for you on the nineteenth. <laughs> well, I, I promise you to work very closely with your staff and whomever you elect to the council and our school board to make sure that we we get through this as well as as humanly possible. I am always here for you phone calls, emails. I want to hear from you. I absolutely want to hear from you. Most importantly, I think we may have voted more than half the people who are, are going to vote in this election. The vote by mail has been very successful, um, but it is still possible to apply for an absentee ballot up until the 12th of May. And um, please do so if you have not already voted. I appreciate all of you who have. I appreciate everyone who is engaged, who comes up and lets us know what we need to be doing. I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to continuing to serve you. And when you get your ballot, make sure you send it in or, or drop it off. Absolutely. Don't sit on it. You have to have a witness present. Get your witness, fill it out, and either put it in the ballot box outside the Executive Plaza Building 601 Caroline or mail it back. Whenever I have seen you in recent days, you don't you go anywhere without your Fredericksburg Strong sign. I do not. My friend Kai made me this. That's right. Well, good luck and thanks. Thank you.